Allow me to now introduce uh, your reviewer, Dr. Catherine Aura, uh, who is a member of faculty in the Department of Science and Mathematics, actually Department of STEM, should be STEM. Dr. Aura Karibu. Thank you, Chair. Uh, allow, allow me to quickly walk through uh, some comments. Alice presented her work at the department, and uh, a lot of comments were given to her revisions, uh, which according to the template that I received is that she has um, addressed most of them, if not all. However, I had a chance to read through our work between yesterday and today, and I, I, I want to make a few comments. Um, the, the, the work is good. The research topic is good, uh, aligned to the objectives, and you can easily uh, tell the variables are uh, from the title, which is a good thing. Uh, I would say the abstract uh, needs a little uh, more briefing, especially a mention of the limitations helps even strength, strengthen the, the comprehensiveness of the abstract. I want to mention something about the background. Uh, it's well articulated, but I have the following observation that I would want Alice to take note of. Uh, in the problem statement, there is lack of specificity, uh, like uh, overall low performance in biology is mentioned, uh, cell biology, but it doesn't clearly articulate the specific problem or the specific research gap that he, she was trying to fill. That needs to come out strongly. Uh, I also found limited literature review uh, in, within the background, it needs to come out strongly from the previous research so that we can see what other scholars are talking about teaching methodologies and why she's going in for the 5E model. Uh, and the, the 5E uh, instructional model needs to be justified. Why? Is it superior? It doesn't really come out other than just being described. It needs to really come out very strong so that people can see the reason why you, you your study is about the 5E instructional uh, model. I want to move to statement of the problem and say there's an area of concern. This, there needs to be some more in-depth exploration of the pot other potential factors leading to poor performance without just talking about uh, the, the, the poor performance, so what, what is leading there, and then now how does 5E model come in? So bring it out more effectively, comprehensively, so that we can see the justification for the 5E instructional model. The objectives and the hypothesis are well articulated and they are aligned. Uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, the theoretical from framework, again, I found it uh, quite comprehensively done. It guides the research design and methodology where it is emphasizing the importance of active learning, inquiry-based learning, experiences for learners. Uh, I would also want to pay attention on the research methodology section uh, the weaknesses I noticed, I noted here, the discussion about the sample size and the representativeness, uh, tell us a little bit more in detail how the participants were selected. You, you, you try to put it there, but not coming out very uh, articulately. Uh, a nice uh, overview of threats to internal validity was given, but again, a little bit more. Uh, you, you could try to, to each one that you identified give more uh, explanation on how you went around controlling for that. The issue of generalizability didn't uh, come out very well uh, because you're talking about cell division and the production that has a small concept in biology and then it is in the Can we generalize these findings to a larger population? If not, it needs to be mentioned. 
uh, uh, that we have a weakness there. Yeah. Um, reliability, validity, I think uh, they were well done, but uh, we would wish that, uh, I would wish that um, it would be more beneficial even for validity. What types of validity did you look at? Was it construct or was it criteria? And uh, the experts you gave the instruments to, what, 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 did they have a scoring criteria? And how did you now improve? Which items did you improve? Did you remove any items and so on, instead of just generalizing? Otherwise, the pilot testing was okay. Um, I come to, to the analysis uh, using, especially the inferential tests, uh, you are using SPSS version 16 for that analysis. Uh, to outdated, out 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 I would say. We have Dr. Epari, the latest is what? Are we at 30? 16 is long, long time ago, so maybe. Yeah, we are probably in 30. Yeah. 16 is close. Yeah, close there, yes. Yeah. 16 in Nikitango Sana. Uh, assumptions for statistical test was done. That, is, that was okay. Uh, I want to finish by looking at talking about the analysis. Uh, the candidate has delved so much into the analysis, yes, but overdone it. There are some analysis that are not necessary until they obscure what she intends to present to the reader. You have your hypothesis, you need to go straight to the hypothesis, analyze and give your findings, report your results. You start with, to me, what I would say, not necessarily irrelevant analysis. You do the pretest of this, you do the, its post-test, you do the pretest of attitude and its post-test before you come to the hypothesis testing. So if you check all the analysis you've done before section 4.6, they are not necessary. And if you feel they are necessary, then just give a mention. You don't need to put all of them there with their tables, with their outputs there. So what the reader is doing is to struggle to find out the analysis for the specific hypothesis. By the time they are reaching there, you've already obscured the findings with this other analysis, and therefore the, the, the reader will not know what you really found out in your study. And that uh, appears again even in chapter five. Uh, when it comes to chapter five, again, there is unnecessary information there that you may need to expand. Um, like uh, the, the, uh, the analysis table 4.2.4, there is an uncover model that was generated. Uh, the question I'm asking, and you may need to answer that, what is the purpose of that analysis? You already answered the objective by an analysis of an over. Can you come with another uncover analysis? I don't understand. You may want to tell us that. Uh, then coming to table 4.2.7, the model summary for attitude and academic achievement. Um, again, I'm asking, this wasn't a simple linear regression. Do not, therefore, uh, split the output table. You've done your regression, then you start splitting the output table into the simple, I mean, specific variables, the predictor variables. I don't understand the, the idea behind that. So it actually is just increasing the pages, the text tables under chapter four that may not be very necessary. So please try to collapse those analysis that you have, expand some that are not necessary so that your work looks more presentable. And that is a very important chapter, remember, because that is the culmination of your work, chapter four. We want to see what you are telling the world about your study. Then section 5.4.1, major conclusions of the study. Again, too much text. Too much text with too much uh, statistics. 
It may it not be necessary, necessary that should just be a summary, like one, one paragraph, paragraph at most two. You've gone beyond that. So what is happening is that you are actually repeating almost what you have already given us in chapter four. That does not look uh, very good in terms of organization of your, your thesis. It dilutes the, the rest of the good work that you have done. So thank you, Chair. I think those are the comments I can give. I didn't have enough time to read very critically the entire document, but at least flicking through for the last four days, that's what I could manage uh, to come up with. Otherwise, overall, to me, this is good work. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Dr. Aura, for that comprehensive review of uh, Alice's work. Uh, I wish to invite Alice if you have uh, some response to the issues that Dr. Aura has raised. Thank you so much, Chair. I want to appreciate Dr. Aura for critically looking at my document and giving me guidance. Because what, what I, I see is that most of them are guidelines that I need to adopt to be able to improve on my document. A statement of a problem, I want to promise that I should be able to go deep into it and be able to realize something that can openly state the purpose of that particular research. The research method, the sample size, it is uh, there... Uh, I think uh, my slides uh, took me too long. Uh, it is somewhere, but uh, the sample size was described in the book. That is the document itself. There is this these tables that Dr. Terry has sent us to make about 4.2.4. What I was doing in that uh, actual chapter 4 and 5 was doing the separate results and then giving the summary. I separate the, for example, the constructs, the attitude, the scientific skills and academic achievement, then finally I bring them together. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let me interject. That's what I'm saying. It is not necessary. At the end of the day, you lose your reader. Because especially somebody who is not very good in statistics, and you're starting with those that are not, or you do the, the, what you are supposed to do, then again you start splitting it, again separating into specific okay. variables. It, it's not even allowed. Okay. Just use that one output. If it has two independent variables there, you have the one output. Now talk about the main effects and what findings you have, and it ends there. You don't again have to separate, because that is repeat, repetition. It is actually it's repeating. Thank you so much. It is well noted. I will address that, Dr. Thank, Thank you so much. much. I think I've addressed it. Okay. Back to the chair. All right. Thank you um, for, for this. Uh, this brings us to the end. It's been very grueling. I think uh, from the departments, again, uh, we just